friends welcome to another video tutorial from Shomu's biology and today's class we are going to talk about a very interesting concept about osmosis which is known as isotonic hypertonic and hypotonic solution so this isotonic hypertonic and hypotonic solution is also known as a tonicity of a solution okay and tonicity is a varying tonicity depends on uh, like concentration of the solute it depends on the, the volume of water and many more things so let's talk about uh, the solution marked as isotonic hypertonic and hypotonic now to understand isotonic hypertonic and hypotonic solution you need to know a little bit about uh, osmosis the theory of osmosis now what happens in osmosis is osmosis is termed as uh, the diffusion of water now what we know in diffusion is that uh, solute moves from high concentration towards the low concentration till uh, the concentration is balanced in both uh, the places okay that's what diffusion means now while osmosis means when there is a difference in concentration in separate chambers separated by a semi permeable membrane in that case uh, the water tries to move from lower concentration of solute to higher concentration of solute so that the concentration of solute can be balanced in both the chambers that's what osmosis is so if you don't know about osmosis you want to know about osmosis in details i'll recommend you to watch my video on osmosis in this channel i'll try to put the link in the description and the video and you can also search that in this uh, in youtube as well now the question is this idea of tonicity it simply says so let me just uh, briefly tell you that in osmosis we know that this is the chamber separated by a semi permeable membrane and let's say uh, these are the black dots we are looking are concentration i mean these are sugar molecules okay the sugar molecules which are present in the left hand side is high than the one present in uh, right hand side now the question is this semi permeable membrane why semi because it will only allow the movement of water water movement only so as a result of which solutes cannot move if solutes can move then solute should have moved from high concentration to the low so sugar should move according to diffusion but in this case the semi permeable membrane prevents uh, the sugar to move so water can only move so what water will do here water molecules start to spread start to move from this left hand side let's say the water balance somewhere here so let's say water balance were somewhere here same in both the location like this okay this is the water level the volume of water now the water start moving from this left hand side to right hand side this is the direction of net water flow through this semi permeable membrane and as a result of which what happens the volume of water decreases in this side while the volume of water increases is this side so as a result of which what happens the sugar the amount of sugar molecules per water decreases okay while the amount of sugar molecule per water increases so concentration of sugar becomes kind of same in both the chambers so this process of water movement continues until they reach same sugar concentration in both the chambers that is osmosis now the question is you know osmosis is the phenomena which causes the delivery or movement of water from the low concentration towards the high concentration of the solute now tonicity is uh, uh, again a phenomena which actually regulates the net movement of water so tonicity regulates in which direction the water will move okay uh, for example uh, in the same chamber let's assume that uh, in the same situation we have a chamber and in the chamber we put let's say this is the chamber and in this chamber we are putting uh, let's say this is sugar solution in there okay sugar solution and in the sugar solution we actually place a uh, cell let's say rbc red blood cell we put red blood cell in there and the situation can be one this second one let me draw another vessel here again pure water and what we put again rbc okay 
and uh, okay so these are the two situations we'll be talking now so think about it in both occasion in one case where put rbc in a pure water in another occasion we put rbc in a sugar solution now the question is in both these occasions which direction the water flow whether the water flow inside the rbc or the water will flow out of the rbc now it depends on the concentration of the molecule that we are actually looking at. So the concentration of sugar outside and the concentration of same sugar inside the RBC. We need both to be balanced. If both are equal, get it? If both are equal, in that case, there won't be net movement of water. That means, you know, water will go inside of the RBC, water will also come out of the RBC. So, the net amount of water goes inside the RBC and the amount of water comes out of the RBC will remain the same, okay, in case of a solution where the concentration of sugar remains the same inside and outside. So, let me first tell you this situation where the sugar concentration is same, RBC as well as environment, same. If that's the case, the net movement, net movement of water becomes zero. So that means total amount of water goes in, total amount of goes out, same. So if RBC is placed in such kind of environment where the concentration of sugar in this case or it can be concentration of any ions, it can be concentration of any salt, anything is same. So if the concentration inside the cell remains the same as the environment outside, that solution is known as isotonic solution. So water goes in, water goes out, in and out of every single RBC and as a result of which uh, the RBC will remain as it is. There won't be any kind of structural changes. So this is isotonic solution. Okay. So if you put a cell in its isotonic solution, there will be net movement of water, like water will move in, water will come out. So the net going movement or outgoing movement, zero. Okay. It will not uh, block much. Now another situation let's say in this occasion we put this red blood cells in pure water and what we found out is that uh, that inside this RBC there are you know sugars there are uh, salt so in this case the concentration of sugar is more than the concentration of sugar in the water because water does not carry any sugar in this case. So in this case the environment, the environment has less sugar concentration. Why? So what we can write the environment has less sugar concentration than RBC. So RBC have more sugar concentration. So in this occasion what will happen? As RBCs have more sugar than uh, the out environment, Remember the same occasion. So in this case, this will be the RBC and this will be the environment. So what will happen? There will be net movement of water from the environment towards the RBC. So water start rushing inside the RBC. So net flow, I don't know whether you can see it. Let me write it here. Net flow environment towards RBC. So as the water starts flowing inside the RBC, it's causing the RBC to gain a lot of water. So RBC is becoming fluffy and the water starts creating immense pressure on the cell membrane. As RBC is an animal cell, there is no cell wall to protect it. So the structural integrity will be hampered and ultimately it will cause the cells to swell up and finally burst open. That's what happens here. Okay. So bursting out of the RBC cell, that's what happens. So this case where the concentration of sugar is less outside the environment than inside the cell is known as hypotonic solution. Hypo means less. So hypotonic means less concentrated. So the environment is less concentrated than the cell itself. So if you place a cell in a hypotonic solution, then there is a chance of net water movement towards the cell and ultimately it will cause the cell to burst open and it will kill the animal cell. For a plant cell, uh, this case where in this case the water will push, the water will push very hard uh, to this uh, cell membrane and the cell membrane will be pushed towards the cell wall. But as there is a very strong cell wall, plant cell can sustain the pressure. Plant becomes 
turgid. So this state we known as turgidity of the plants because this pressure exerted by the membrane towards cell wall is known as turgid pressure. Okay, turgor pressure. So that's regarding hypotonic solution. So let me write it here. This is hypotonic solution. And a third occasion, let me draw a third occasion where uh, I don't know whether you can see if I draw it here again. Let me draw it in a small vessel. And again, there is this sugar solution. So, and again, we have RBCs placed inside. But this time, hyper means more. Hypertonic means the tonicity of the environment means the concentration of sugar or salts in the environment is more than that of inside the cell. So sugar concentration is very high outside the environment. There is also sugar inside the RBC but less. So what will happen? You know in isotonic the concentration was same but in this case it's not the same. So the concentration of sugar present in the environment is greater than that of in the RBC. So what will happen here? Again, as per the law of osmosis, water start to flow from the cell outside the environment. So water is moving from the cell, from red blood cell to the environment. So as water flows out, so net flow RBC to the environment. So as net flow is from RBC towards the environment, the water is moving out as a result of which the RBCs lack the cellular integrity. It becomes shrinked, shrinkage occurs and the RBC will be structureless and cannot be fixed back if this process continues for a certain period of time. So if you put this cell in a hypertonic solution then water is moving out and why water is going in moving out in all these locations? Because to follow the rule of osmosis because in environment we always try to maintain same concentration okay to maintain the same concentration with the help of the law of osmosis water is moving in or out depending upon what kind of tonicity the cell is actually placed in and we can actually measure this tonicity with the help of a term known as water potential now what is water potential water potential is known as uh, a value that dictates the net direction of water movement and that is uh, actually written as a psi okay we can write it down as a psi so a psi w is the water potential we can write it like psi p psi s and psi g so you can write it like water potential equals to pressure potential plus solute potential plus gravitational potential we can uh, exclude gravitational here because gravitational potential is same in all these occasions because we are doing the experiment in the same, uh, same uh, place. Okay? But the pressure potential and solute potential has never become the same in every single occasion. Because pressure potential means the more pressure you apply to one place, the water will move from high pressurized region to low pressurized region. And solute potential means water will always move from low solute potential towards the high solute potential like following the rule of osmosis. So the water potential value actually tells us the net direction of water movement. See water potential value of environment is greater than the water potential value or which is always known as the, the water potential value of uh, say RBC. So there are these three occasions. So if water potential value of environment is greater than water potential value of RBC, that means what? So water potential value is more outside, less inside. That means water will flow. So more water potential and less water potential. That means water will always flow from higher water potential regions to lower water potential region. Do not confuse it with osmosis idea. Osmosis case means when there is more solute, water will move from less solute towards more solute. That's a different case. Water potential is a, is, a, is a factor which we calculate utilizing both solute potential as well as pressure potential as well as gravitational force and potential. So the, the bottom line is the water will flow from higher water potential region to lower water potential region. 
So in this case, if environmental water potential is more than the RVC, water will flow from environment towards RVC. So simply write it like this, water will flow from environment to RVC, right? And the second situation, when the water potential of environment less than water potential of RVC, then what will happen? The net movement of water from RVC towards the environment. And a situation where the water potential of environment equals to water potential of RVC, then there is no net movement because water can move from environment to RVC, so as from RVC to environment. So there is no net movement of water that is possible. Okay. So this is all regarding uh, the hypotonic, hypertonic and isotonic solution. I hope you understand the process. If you like this video, please hit the like button, share this video with your friends, subscribe to my channel to get more and more videos like that. Thank you.